Hello, you're watching a replay of the Facebook Live. My name is Max, and sitting next to me is Alex. Hello, Max. Hello, world. How are you? All right. So today we're talking about a very exciting topic. Three things I know about my business partner, but his wife doesn't. And I think I should clarify some very important things straight away. I'm not married. Alex is not married either. So we don't live double lives. Do you, Alex? No. Good. All right. So this applies to pretty much everyone. This is just a general topic. And I think our seven years of experience give us quite a good advantage to get insight into this business world, how it works. And uh, yeah, it applies to male and female. There are as many uh, women in New Zealand that are directors and shareholders. And we're going to talk about what it's like to be a director and a business owner. Exactly. Alex, yeah. what are your ideas? I uh, just want to add that um, things we're going to share with you today um, should not be taken as uh, legal advice or anything like that. So we're just going to talk general out of uh, uh, expertise, out of our um, talks and uh, uh, people we know and who shared the ideas with us with us over these years and um, we thought that these three crucial things we're gonna talk about tonight um, could be a very very interesting for many people in business feels please feel free to leave any comments or actually challenge our ideas if you are a lawyer or if you've got any experience feel free to share it with you uh, with us as well and um, post comments and um, we'd be happy to address them if you have any questions. So the first one is, chances are if you are married or in a relationship with a person that is a director, chances are that this person has a family trust. And all the very exciting gadgets and assets and toys that you are surrounded by, may not actually be owned by this person. It is rather owned by the entity called the family trust. Is it correct, Alex? Yeah, um, it, it is. And um, you might discover a few very nasty surprises if things go south and your relationship sort of become, um, you guys become not so close anymore and decide to separate uh, with each other. So um, one very important thing to be, to consider when you are uh, a spouse uh, of a business, uh, of, of a person in business is that the, he or she would have a, a business trust and all the assets will be um, shielded in, uh, in that trust. And in many cases, it's done before the relationship has begun. The trust could be, what, 50, 100 years old, right? Yeah. Well, it, it could be started by your ancestors uh, or by your spouse's ancestors uh, in order to protect um, the wealth of their children, grandchildren, of, uh, to distrib distribute uh, the money between kids and that sort of stuff. So... The trusts, a family trust with a long history, would be pretty much like a Fort Knox. It would be impossible to break in. Mm, exactly. And in many cases, these family trusts are created with a good purpose, with a good end in mind, because um, it's, for example, in my situation, uh, I have a sister and I could decide that, and she's underage, and I could decide that if something happens to me, I'd like to some of the assets to go directly to her instead of my parents. I don't know if I want to fund her education or if I want to go all my assets to go to the charity because I'm an extremely philanthropic person for some reason. And so it's, there are many reasons that family trusts do exist, and they actually it's a good vehicle to um, manage your assets. Yeah, so our advice to you, um, if you are in business, go and spend those uh, a couple of thousand dollars with a lawyer and set up a family trust. Trust me, if, it, if, if it's not you, 
but then the future generations of your family will benefit from it greatly. Or at least talk to your partner about it because um, you can actually create another family trust, right? You can create a new family trust for your new family, for your yeah. specific family. And the things that you acquired together over the years together can be set, uh, can be put in that family trust. And then your children uh, and not the children of uh, your brother's spouse uh, will be uh, the beneficiaries of that trust. Let's move on to a second one. Good. All right. So what's the next topic? Uh, the next one is kind of related to the first one, and it's, it is about a very notorious thing in many cultures, uh, a prenup agreement. Oh, right, yeah. Max? It's a very famous document. So this, uh, we just spoke about the assets, which your business partner may or may not have, because if there is a family trust. But certainly there will be a lot of liabilities and debts if this person is involved in the business, it's just the nature of doing things. You have your risks, you have your bank overdraft, you have your car loans, you have all sorts of loans. Especially when the business is just begun or in the first few years of uh, operating. Exactly. Yeah, so it's a very risky um, entity to run a business, to have a business. And without knowing, you actually become liable in many cases you become 50 percent liable for all the debts of, if, your, of your partner of your partner yes so if you use these assets whether it's a vehicle if you use the business to fund your travel to fund your life you immediately become liable by 50 percent of the debt because you use this uh, debt to fund your life and uh, you may not realize it, and I think it, you'd be very surprised how big the debt is, especially if we start talking about houses, right? What the average house now in Auckland is uh, about one million bucks. Yeah, you, you might talk about your house specifically. Uh, yes, so I have, uh, I'm privileged enough to have one in, uh, well, actually not one, but uh, with the one, for example, for argument's sake, the one at West Harbor, if you say one million bucks, and it's 100% funded by the other, uh, ventures by the business or the other properties and all of a sudden if you get married to any other person that's got a one million dollars of debt and you live in the house or you use this house for any kind of purpose you become liable by 50 percent you all of a sudden you are five hundred dollars less or five hundred dollars poor five hundred thousand dollars poor not not that i believe something will happen to the property in the next uh in the near future, but that's another topic. Uh, so yeah, be careful to what you get involved. Would you actually, Alex, read the, I don't know, get, get some kind of financial statement from your business partner now that you know that there are a lot of debts? Like what would you do personally? I would just talk to a partner, to my partner, and um, on, you know, the honest talk would be the, the great thing. And uh, probably it's a good thing to actually have a look at the shareholders agreement uh, of the business uh, if you if you don't have one uh, if you're running a business and you don't have one uh, and there's more than one shareholder probably a good idea to 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 actually go and get one um, so if you do uh, just ask your partner to show it to you and uh, discuss it um, uh, in uh, in details and things again things there uh, which might be there would be surprising to you and um, if you have questions go and seek legal advice and uh, come prepared and you know, when you are ready to sign the prenup agreement come prepared so take your time um, learn your your partner's um, assets and liabilities learn about them um, and obviously know your assets and liabilities so you come to the table with both with, with something and it will in the future it will help you a lot to distinguish who owns what and who who owes what so yeah basically prenup agreement is is quite an important document where it can actually protect you personally from 
being liable by at least 50% of your partner's debts and yeah. liabilities. Um, so let's sum up. The first one is that you should discuss with your partner, is there a family trust? Should you set up your own family trust and what to do about it? The second point is that 100% there will be debts. Everyone has debts nowadays. I, I believe there is no person that doesn't have a debt and you discuss it, you should, yeah, decide how it affects you and should you do any documents to protect yourself and your family. And the third point, what's, uh, what's the third point, Alex? Uh, the third point is um, a bit philosophical, I'd say, and many people can agree or disagree with it. And even me and Max uh, are not 100% um, behind that. Um, so even though we share the similar views, but um, the, we, we, we don't agree on, 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 some, on some details. Okay. Uh, yeah, Maxim just, just realized that, we, apparently. <laughs> so... Um, Is, are you talking about the, uh, the workload if it's, it's a new startup? Yeah, so when you start a business and you have a partner, um, Probably the business would be uh, a number one in, in, in that period, period of your life. Uh, so it, it, is, it's, it is okay uh, to, to, to have it. And if your partner is, uh, do love you, and they probably uh, can understand that you going through a, a very difficult time of your life and um, you do want your ultimate goal is everyone to be happy, including your your partner. So maybe you should let them uh, be, uh, let them let the business be uh, number one in your uh, partner's life for a while. Uh, certainly not for a longer period of time, and that's where me and Max uh, disagree. Actually, <laughs> well, in my opinion. If you have a partner, whether it's he or she, and you both decide to go on a journey to start a new business, you have to realize it's going to take a lot of energy from your partner and possibly yourself if you're going to support, support them, um, he, him or she. And in this situation, you just have to discuss it, how you're going to manage it. Because for the first couple of years, uh, it, not only it's going to be losing money in many situations, um, nine out of ten businesses will lose money in the first couple of years. And to make it work and to make it successful, you will have to work at least 12 hours, five to six days a week, right? So that's inevitable. I don't know. I don't know any business person that doesn't work seven days a week, six, six days a week. And um, yeah, so that's my point that, uh, in my personal opinion, it will be hard for the first couple of years, and but, but if both of you agree on it, and if both of you expect it, and you're hope, happy with it, then I think you'll be fine. Yeah, so the most important thing about our third um, advice for business owners, or actually for a people in relationship with a business owner, is to Try to be more understanding and keep a big picture in mind. Maybe today or tomorrow it's going to be hard, but in the future it will definitely be fruitful and you all enjoy the results of the amazing venture you started a few years ago. And I'll give you a bonus um, tip that Alec touched uh, lightly on the subject. It's about the shareholders agreement. You are actually may not be part of the shareholders agreement if your partner is a business owner because uh, this shareholders agreement is done in many cases privately between the directors and shareholders, whether it's two or three or more, I don't know how many shareholders are there. In this situation, the spouse may not be part of the business and may not have any active decisions in the future of the business. So if you want to be part of the business, you have to discuss it with your partner and make sure you sign the agreement and you are part of this agreement because you never know what happens to your 
business partner and if you've got kids, you have to care for them. And I mean, you mean most likely you will get a share of the business. Um, but if you want to be active while your business partner is well and healthy, you may want to have a look at this document. Once again, read the document, see the lawyer. It's only a couple of hundred dollars for That's the shareholders nice. agreement. Yeah, it's good advice. So yeah, let's wrap up. Uh, wrap up. Um, to sum it up, the four points: have a at your family trusts, uh, discuss your debts, and be careful when you start a new business venture. It's going to be hard for the first couple of years, and there is a shareholders agreement. So have a read. Thank you for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them later, and we'll read them and answer. Awesome. Thank you. See you next week. And this.